Welcome back to Warrior Wrestling Greatest Matches. Number six on our countdown comes to us from Warrior Wrestling 3. The Lucha Brothers, one of the most decorated tag teams around the world, faced another decorated tag team from around the world. From Spain, Team White Wolf came all the way over to Chicago Heights to put on a classic against Penta and Phoenix. And uh, the Lucha Brothers consider themselves brothers, of course, Team White Wolf. Uh, Carlos Rama and the A-Kid consider themselves to be like brothers as well. These two have become a very popular act over in Spain and the UK. They've been imported here by Principal Steve, our uh, authority figure in uh, Warrior Wrestling. Did you just say the Lucha Brothers consider themselves brothers? You know they are brothers. They are brothers. Sorry. Right. Yeah, it was a misstep on my part. That's there. okay. That's I'm all right. Yes. I just want to make sure that the that the viewers at home aren't like are confused. I, th I, I, thought, confused. I thought they were brothers. They, yes, I meant to say the A Kid and Carlos Romo are like brothers. I misstep there. I understand A Kid has had some classics with the likes of Ricochet, Zack Saber Jr. Correct. I mean, imagine A Kid and Phoenix one on one. Yeah, it's really a dream match here, you know, and that's the thing is A-Kid, as quick as he's breaking out, so many dream matchups still for him to have here, and he's wrenching away right now at that ankle, which is smart here when you're dealing with luchadors like Phoenix and Pentagon. You want to try to ground them as early as possible, take away that ability for them to get onto the ropes. And the Mexican Phoenix here flipped it around, and he's the one dishing out punishment on A-Kid right now. Team White Wolf has faced the likes of, uh, as you might have mentioned, Pete Dunne, Tyler Bate, among others. And let's talk about that, uh, that European wrestling scene for a minute. Absolutely. I mean, you, you talk about heating up, wow. Not only, uh, you know, obviously with NXT U uh, UK, but quick cover there. No, hold on. Nice show of strength there by A-Kid. Getting the arms up, and now look at the bridge. Yeah, very unique way to get out of that pin there from the A-Kid. And up and over, wow, like a gazelle. A wheelbarrow, standing switch. Phoenix able to break free. Excellent use of that bottom rope from Phoenix. Cover, kick out. Cover, kick out. I got a feeling we're going to be saying that a lot. And Ray Phoenix challenging. Daring A Kid, push me. Take me to someplace new, A Kid. And both teams tag out. Pentagon and Carlos set to take the stage. And listen to that reaction to Pentagon. I don't trust this Carlos Romo fellow. Why not? There's a look in his eye. Pentagon, I think, is feeling the same thing. Do I trust this kid? Oh. No fear. I don't think Carlos took too well to that. Pentagon taken off the glove. Ooh. That's one thing you don't interrupt. There is something unsettling about Pentagon. That is demonic, that man. Carlos ran right into that super kick. Somehow stayed on his feet. And I like how I like how Team White Wolf is pushing the Lucha Brothers here. I'm very impressed by this. There's definitely and 
Wow! And that's what I'm saying. There is definitely a one-upsmanship game going on. Was there a tag? There was not a tag, the best of my knowledge. Is, it, this, is this, this a Lucha Rules match? I believe it could be a Lucha Rules match. I guess that's at the discretion of referee Jeremy right now. Maybe there was a tag and we missed it. That's always possible. Could, could have been a blind tag. But I, I, I understand what you're saying because usually, wow, you team up against a kick out there by Pentagon. You team up against uh, the Lucha Brothers. I don't know that I've seen anybody really challenge them. But they're, they're one step ahead. Yeah, they really are. You know, and that's the thing is, you know, they're from over in Spain. They rest, they've been trained and brought up in a, in a non-traditional environment. It's not the UK scene. It's not the North American scene. It's a smaller scene here. They've watched a lot of tape. They've gotten to know these uh, wrestlers a different way, you right. know? And it's almost like um, when you get put into a, when you put a boxer and an MMA guy in the ring and, and the MMA guy comes at the boxer in a bunch of directions the boxer's never seen before, you know, catches him off guard. And Carlos now in the driver's seat. Very unique position for Pentagon to be in here right now. Of course, in 2018, Pentagon actually held the Impact World Championship at one mm -hmm. point. Yep, a lot of people may forget about that. He put the brakes on there. There's a, That's the experience factor coming in. And like a lot of talent here tonight that is uh, putting injury at risk as they get ready for Impact Homecoming, the Lucha Brothers uh, in another big bout tomorrow night will be competing against LAX in a bit of a dream match. Ah, that's going to be something else. Well, oh. before they get to LAX, they definitely oh. shouldn't take Team White Wolf too lightly here. Nice transition there by White Wolf as well. Carlos had some trouble getting uh, Phoenix placed where he wanted him to, but was able to hang on and see the way that he kind of pulled the head up to make sure that uh, A-Kid was able to deliver that, uh, that single like drop kick. And look at A-Kid here. Nothing fancy, just a, a rear, rear lock there right now. But it gets pushed off pretty quick by Phoenix. I thought I saw some spittle or a tooth go flying out of Phoenix's mouth there from that drop kick from A-Kid. And that's, a, and that's one of the things I love about Warrior Wrestling here, Rich. You know, you see shows like All In, which introduced the world to Bandito on a bigger mm -hmm. stage. A guy like A-Kid is waiting for that same kind of opportunity. Of course, the Principal Steve here, always looking out for talent that's going to break out and steal the show. A-Kid, Carlos Romo, the w Team White Wolf, those are the kinds of performers you're going to get to be introduced by, to and surprised by at Warrior Wrestling. Into the cover here, that's not going to put them away. It's almost disrespectful to Phoenix, trying to cover him like that. That's something that uh, I think Carlos, if he hasn't learned yet, at some point he probably will. Well, and these, you, you, you can't disrespect the Lucha Brothers. Well, they're young guns. They don't know any better yet, right? To them, every opportunity is just opportunity. I like that they're not trying to bow down. They're not trying to play nice. They're not trying to supplicate, supplicate themselves at the footsteps of the Lucha Brothers. They're trying to walk in there and say, hey, we're young, we're virile, we're top dogs too. If you want to beat us, you got to beat us. You better show up ready to go. And some monster blows there from Phoenix. The intensity picking up Phoenix with the backhand spring cutters. And Team White Wolf is out on the ground. Is this where Phoenix is going to be able to get to Pentagon? Pentagon running clotheslines, and the, the demon is loose, and he is running roughshod right here in the ring. I think he hit a sling blade right there moments ago. But whatever it was, the damage being done, wait a minute. You can feel that in every ounce of your being when Pentagon lays in those chops. Oh, sounded like the slap on a kick drum. 
You're a drummer, right? I am a drummer. So you know drummer references. Oh! Big boot, super kick. One goes low. Oh! Both go high. And I don't think I don't think the ringing in your ears ever goes away after that one. I think you have tinnitus forever. Wow. And Carlos Robo there saving his partner for and Team White Wolf. Uh, I don't know that I would have done that. That's I mean that man your your friend is very seriously injured. He's been well, you just took that wheelbarrow splash and yeah, then you you know, I, I would have just maybe let him take the pin here, but these guys are nuts. Well, nobody they, wants to lose, Nick. I just, I don't know. <laughs> let, let him, I mean, the, the Lucha brothers are so imposing right now. Do you want to take any more punishment? So hard to get a room filled of wild fans quiet, but Pentagon seems to have done it. Oh, oh, oh. That was more like collarbone. And look at how red Carlos's chest is now. How do you keep up? My God, double stop off the top. That's gonna be enough. And look at the shock on the face of the Lucha Brothers. What more do they have to do to keep these two young guns down right now? Wow, what a great misdirection there from Carlos sending Pentagon into Phoenix. And A-Kid was laying out there resting up. Is he good to go? Is he gonna be able to help out now in some offense? Indeed. German suplex, a nice combination maneuver. And shades, Team White Wolf here. Yeah, were you going to say Shades of the Lucha Brothers? Yeah, I was going to say yeah. Shades of the Lucha yeah, Brothers. Exactly. Took their own stuff out, you know? Here goes Carlos with a suicide dive. Oh, man. An A kid follows up. The Lucha Brothers, like a wall. Daring them, dive at us. Four. Seems like it, it seems like it's barely even phasing the Lucha Brothers. This is a fifth dive here. The Lucha Brothers finally a little bit stubbly here. Dive number six. Big moonsault to the outside. So dangerous. You see his ankles barely miss that steel guardrail there. And not a lot of room to maneuver. No. Between the ring and the guardrails. And if you take your ankles out, well, you can kiss the rest of this match goodbye. And what are Team White Wolf thinking here? Thinking about putting this one away, Nick. A kid going to the top rope. Huge missile drop kick into the cover. Carlos hooks the leg, and there's Penta with a kick right to the face. The Pentagon Jr. just looks frustrated. He looks like he looks like he's at the end here. He doesn't want to push himself any further. He just wants to wrap this thing up. That kick was like Charlie Brown finally getting a hold of the football. I mean, it was solid, wasn't it? It was very, very solid. Pentagon and the A Kid here—a dream, a dream matchup here. We're gonna get a little taste of it here, as it looks like these two are gonna exchange some. I Kid's chest is just so blistered and red and raw right now. Yeah. Running high knee. with a splash from the top, the moonsault, and whoa! Canadian Destroyer! And that was perfect. 
in synchronicity there from the Lucha Brothers. All the men are down. Who's going to take advantage of this opportunity? Everybody rising to their feet here tonight in Chicago. I can literally feel our commentary table shaking right now, Rich. The Lucha Brothers. Team White Wolf. What a dream matchup here at Warrior Wrestling. Hashtag Warrior Wrestling 3. If you want to let the world know how much you're enjoying this hot action here on this cold Chicago night in Chicago Heights, Illinois. This isn't even our main event. One more match to go, Rich. It's hard to think. Where do we go from here? So get that title match on the way. Bandito against Brian Cage for the Warrior Wrestling Championship. And how many more chops to the chest can a kid take? Well, I was just kind of looking here. I mean, this match has been going for, what do you think, probably 15, 20 minutes at least, oh, right? Absolutely. So uh, what do either of these teams, first of all, what do they have left? And this is maybe a situation where wow. Team White Wolf's age, their youth, their exuberance could uh -oh. pay off. No, no way. Hold on here. Wait a minute. You might have spoken too soon. That's it. I'm sorry. Suicide dive to boot. Pentagon One, into the cover. Three. And that's all she wrote. Hey you, are you a professional wrestling fan? Check out the High Spots Wrestling Network. Hours and hours of the best pro wrestling on the planet. Streaming on your phone, tablet, PC, and available on Roku. Thousands of videos, all the top indie promotions. So what are you waiting for, champ? Head over to www.highspotswrestlingnetwork.com and check it out today. Hashtag HSWN. It's the best $9.99 in the biz. Number five on our countdown comes to us from Warrior Wrestling 7. A dream match. A dream star to have grace our presence. Minoru Suzuki traveling all the way from Japan to face filthy Tom Lawler. Check it out. Nick, this crowd, the entire building, the entirety of this crowd rose to their feet minutes before Suzuki even made his way out from the locker room. I got on my feet, Rich. I, I mean, I've been sitting here quietly just trying to take in this moment because it is so huge for a guy of Suzuki's stature who has done so many things. I mean, we're talking a former IWGP Intercontinental Champion, never open weight champion. I mean, this is one of the men who co-founded Pancreas which is uh, considered to be uh, the origins of MMA as we know it, uh, Suzuki has. So, oh, Tom Lawler. Oh, uh, no, uh, Suzuki's like, no, that's you fine. See the, you see the, he's, yeah. Yeah, I'll move closer to you. Come on, man. Now that's the thing is he's in the seated position and he's trying to, he's trying to bring Lawler in. Lawler doesn't know what to make of him. Oh, look, Suzuki got him wow. tied up at the ankle, brought him down. And that's what I'm saying, Rich. Lawler grabbing hold of the bottom rope to break the hold. I mean, this could be a technical masterpiece tonight. Boz Rutten, Ken Shamrock, Josh Barnett. These are men that have sat under the learning tree of Minoru Suzuki. You know, one of the greatest technical grapplers of this and any era. I mean, you mentioned it, one of the best fighters in the world. The second king of Pancrase. I, he's got a million ways that he can tie you up. Yeah, and you know those head scissors, uh, chin locks, you know, he does a lot of that stuff to grab you and grind you, and a lot of, a lot of wrestlers would take a move like that and quickly move to the next one. He uses moves like head scissors like that to, to reposition your body, to open up uh, little nooks, 
that he can play with it and, and manipulate oh, just wow. like that. Oh, I got a cross arm breaker. Just like that. Oh, well, nice counter by Lawler. And now it is Lawler going after Suzuki's arm. You know, one of my favorite shows of the year every year, WrestleMania weekend, Bloodsport. And uh, Giddy, I watched Suzuki take on Josh Barnett at that show, and it, it, it's, it's art. This is art, what we're watching right here right now. Two men of this level going in there and allowing their bodies to violently be manipulated like this. And Suzuki is going to roll out uh, you know, into the bottom rope there. He's trying to get some feeling back in his left arm and his left hand. You know, think back uh, a while back, the match that Lawler had. Uh, against, was it Chris Ridgway at Warrior Wrestling 5? Yep. And uh, that was uh, another technical masterpiece. And oh my God! And there it is, going for that arm breaker again! Ropong arm breaker. And now it is the right arm of Tom Lawler that's. Uh oh. Lawler right into the barricade. I think Suzuki wants to try and damage. Oh, he wants to damage oh. both arms. Oh, Rich. My God. And here's the thing about Tom Lawler, too. I believe that is the arm that he had surgery on about a year and a half, two years ago, where there is a steel plate in his arm from that surgery. And Suzuki now, with a weapon in hand, don't want to get yourself disqualified. And the ref's gonna allow it. You tell Suzuki he's disqualified. Yeah. Look, there, there shouldn't be any restraints here. These are two of the most dangerous men on the planet. Let them go. And you think about how dangerous these men are inside the ring. Now we're outside the ring. Big headbutt. And Tom Lawler throwing himself at Suzuki there, but that's. Uh, he doesn't know what else to do. I mean, you know, but that's that's the tenacity you've got from a guy like Filthy Tom Lawler. But it's a testament to Minoru Suzuki, who knows how to go toe to toe with a wrestler, a technical grappler of Tom Lawler's caliber. And look at that, just disrespect from Suzuki, slapping him around. Oh, you think you're a big UFC fighter? Come on, hit me. Show me what you got. Offers himself up. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. Nice little smug smile there from Suzuki. Oh! Overhand chop. That's not a knife edge chop. That's, no. a, that's an overhand. Oh, okay, okay. A little bit of a off balance, off kilter there from Suzuki. Oh no. Oh! And that is that veteran prowess right there of Suzuki taking advantage. These two trading shots back and forth. Like a game of Red Rover with fists. Filthy Tom Lawler with the right hands. Minoru Suzuki winded up. Oh my God. You notice how he took a second to, to figure out where he wanted that to land. Yep. You know, he wasn't, yeah. he wasn't throwing like a wild punch, lined it up. Oh, that was precision all the way. Laser focused. Oh. Oh. To your point, again. Yeah, you know, and, and that's the thing is there, there's no wasted movement with Minoru Suzuki. And Tom Lawler to his knees just off of a big punch there from Suzuki. And now he grabbed it. 
Shades of what we saw earlier in the bout with Suzuki taking Lawler from the seated, posi seated position. Suzuki had Lawler's hair, and now Lawler laying in the strikes. And Suzuki just barely shaking oh, here. Spinning heel feet. kick. And Lawler. Boom! Oh. Bell in the back suplex, cover! Not enough. It's gonna take more than that to, to put away Minoru Suzuki here tonight at Warrior Wrestling, Marion Catholic High School. Hashtag Warrior7 if you're watching this match. You wanna let the world know what you're thinking right now. Let us know what you're thinking as you're taking in this epic collision course. And nice front headlock there from Suzuki, cutting off that windpipe of Tom Lawler. Lawler able to counter. Oh! Falcon Arrow. A little bit of trouble getting into the cover, and that allows Suzuki to power out. And uh, that, that to me looked like the first time Suzuki had been shaken really the whole bout. Yeah. You know, there was a it was a full two count, almost a three. You know, clearing his eyes, clearing his head out there as he was coming to his feet. Still not fully to his feet. Look at that. Kick it to his feet. Fell back over. Enjoys doling it out, huh? No kidding, man. I've never seen a man more happy to be violent. Oh, running kick. Let's get that almost kind of evil smile on his face, does Suzuki. Oh. Oh. You know, to put the uh, to put to put this into put this into consideration, Rich, when did when did Tom Lawler start pro wrestling? Three, four, five years ago? Yep. Minoru Suzuki made his New Japan pro wrestling debut in 1988. Yep. 88. You know, I, I, I was thinking what Suzuki has in experience, though. He also has that. Mm, is it a disadvantage in age? You tell me. Uh, that you know, that's the thing we're gonna find out here. I definitely think it plays to Suzuki's favor to keep this match short, right? The longer this match goes, I think that plays into a young man's hand, right? I, I just have to believe that. And look at Suzuki. Now. Oh boy! Listen to this place erupt. Wild punches there. And Lawler now. Flurry of offense. You gotta stop though. You gotta stop the, these trading shots. Stay on him. Yeah, Lawler kind of let up a little bit. Yeah, I don't understand that, Rich. That's an interesting game he's playing with Suzuki here. Maybe let the old man tire himself out. That's true. You know, he can punch and punch and punch, and then you can just nudge him and he'll fall over. Oh, oh look at yeah, that. Yeah, but do you want to absorb punches from a guy like this? Not like that. I don't care how old he is. I mean, look, he, he fell there like his neck had been snapped. That was a that was a decisive fall right to the mat there. That's how hard he got hit. Did you see his head snap sideways? Lawler dodges that one. Wow, I felt that over here, how hard those men, how hard those men hit the ring. Two count. I mean, we're a good 20, 25 feet away and I feel like I, I felt that under my feet. And Tom Lawler now calling for the submission. Gonna go for the rear naked choke and he's got a, oh no, I thought he had it, no. Now he's got it. And he's gotta get on his back, he's gotta pull Suzuki to the ground, he's gotta keep away from those ropes. Drop him right in the middle, and don't let go. This is not a time to try to prove yourself by letting this man up and go back and forth. Lawler trying to shift his weight backwards and get Suzuki away from the ropes. You can see Suzuki trying so hard. He's low to the ground right now, and he did it. He managed to get to those ropes, and Lawler forced to break it up. If you're wondering, Minoru Suzuki, 51 years old. Oh, and now he's got it locked in. Suzuki with the rear naked choke down to the mat. Lawler able to roll through. And that's where you want to have him, Tom. Oh, wait. Suzuki now. He's the one getting behind him. Trading submission holds. Both men have been able to keep the other right there in the middle of the ring where you want you want to keep him, you don't want to allow him to get to the ropes. And Suzuki here just looks like he's taking a walk in a park, so casual. Lawler's a little glassy-eyed. 
And Suzuki with encouragement from the fans here in Chicago. Suzuki into the cover. Pile driver puts Lawler away. And that was that was everything I could hope for more, Rich. Hard hitting, technical classic, and a legend in Minoru Suzuki here. Number four on our countdown, an epic showdown a year in the making. The Warrior Wrestling Women's Championship was on the line in the main event of Stadium Series Night One when Tessa Blanchard, returning to wrestling for the first time in the pandemic, defended it against Chicago's own Kylie Ray. Check it out. And look at that gaze right there. That is the walk, the strut of a champion in Tessa Blanchard. The last time we saw Tessa was at Impact Wrestling. We haven't seen her since. She's been off the grid. This is her return to form. This is her return match to pro wrestling. Is there ring rust? I don't know. I guess we're gonna have to find out. Kylie Ray has been definitely in action as of late. Of course, like we noted earlier, Tessa Blanchard just weeks ago, marrying Daga, uh, who opened the show here tonight with a victory over Isaiah Velasquez, who I will point out, I've seen photos of Isaiah and Kylie Ray out there. I think there's something to it. I think those two might be an item. And so for the night to begin with Daga and Isaiah, with Daga getting the win over Isaiah Velasquez, I gotta think there's a little bit of rage in Kylie Ray too here, where she doesn't want her royal couple to go 0 and 2 here tonight. Not only does she want gold, she wants to send a statement. She wants to win one for her team here tonight. I think. Last time we saw Tessa Blanchard here at Warrior Wrestling, it, I mean, it's been—it seems like it's been forever, hasn't it? And you see Tessa's reaction coming out here, the look on her face. She knows that. I, I mean, it's hard for me to say. I've always liked Tessa Blanchard. I've always gotten along with Tessa Blanchard. However, would you agree or disagree that maybe she has brought some of this scrutiny on herself? Look, Tessa Blanchard sees herself at the top of the chain, right? She sees herself as an alpha. And when you're an alpha, sometimes you treat everyone around you like betas, Rich. And I think that that has maybe rubbed some people in the pro wrestling business wrong. But you know what? I'd argue that is Tessa Blanchard's right as an alpha to do and say and take what she wants. And there is a lot of speculation around Tessa right now. I have no idea what, but I don't know what is Kylie doing right now, by the way. Uh, well, she's taking the, the title belt. Oh, oh she, uh, that, she put the belt in her well, back. She, I think she was trying to steal the title and take off. It's but. just like I told you, Rich, smile to your face, stab you in the back. She's a thief. Okay, okay, okay. Look at uh, Tessa. Uh, she's, I think, fierce is probably the the only adjective I could think. Maybe scary. Would you want to get in her way? Look, look at look at the look at her face. This is Tessa's return to form. This is her first title match in months. She doesn't want to lose. She doesn't want to put up a bad showing. She wants to come back, reassert herself, beat up this smiley Kylie character, and get back to the business of kicking ass, ruling ass. Well, 
Tessa Blanchard here now watching her title being handed off by the referee to the timekeeper. And uh, the ball is in play now, so to speak. And, you know, as I was saying uh, before, before Kylie Ray, a thief, stole the belt. Thief, thieving, stealing. Oh, come on now. Criminal. She's a criminal. Uh, I, th I think she was just trying a little bit of gamesmanship. Wow. I think it was all in good fun. Look, at, she wants to shake Tessa's hand. Or a pandemic. You think that's a nice thing to do? Well, shake everybody, a hand? Everybody's been, Fist bumps. everybody's been tested beforehand. Sure, okay, I got you. All right, fine. But Kylie Ray here taking on Tessa. Tessa requesting her boots get washed by the, the ring crew. Well, let's let's be honest here. If you look in the ring, it, you know, there you go. I don't I don't blame Tessa. Look at the ring. You can see all the dirt. That's dirty, the, yeah, 100%. From the, from the previous match. Well, and the thing about Tessa, like I was saying, ever since we saw her vacate her, her last uh, employment uh, company, well, what's what is next for Tessa Blanchard? Her dad's at AEW. There's the vibrant women's division over at WWE. There's the Women of Honor. His Ring of Honor is looking to get back up onto its feet. And then, of course, over in Japan, New Japan and Stardom now sharing the same Bushi Road umbrella. I mean, a lot of opportunities out there for Tessa Blanchard. Has she picked what? Has she picked a new path? We may not know. You know, but what we do know is she's going to want to send a signal here tonight about where she's at. Here's a question for you, Nick, and I don't know if you know the answer to this or not. When was the last time Tessa Blanchard was actually inside a wrestling ring? Inside, inside a ring, not training, uh, but in a, in a competitive matchup against a competitive opponent. I think it was Lacey Ryan back at uh, uh, FSW's Mecca 6. That was back in March. Wow. So it's been some time here. That was pre-WrestleMania. I mean, has she been competing in, in Mexico at all? I mean, no, do, do no, we know? no, she hasn't been competing at all. In fact, what Tessa's been doing, and by the way, an excellent wrist lock here from uh, Tessa onto Kylie Ray, they're wrenching her way on that thing. Uh, but Tessa has been uh, planning and executing her wedding with Daga now. Obviously, when everything went down, she, they had already planned their wedding. Uh, they saw it through. It happened about six weeks ago. They've got their honeymoon on the horizon. So I wonder hey, where's where her head? Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Is like she's been so focused on a wedding and a marriage and getting that part of her life in, in order. Has she been training? Has she lost a step? Now, What's her attitude? Well, now comparatively, when was the last time Kylie Ray? Uh, when was she in a ring last? Well, she's on Impact, Impact Wrestling. That's, what I'm, that's yeah. what I'm saying. It's much more recent than Tessa. Yeah, you know, we were talking to Kimberly. Uh, backstage earlier about how she's got an upcoming uh, tag team confrontation with Deanna Perrazzo against Sue and Kylie Ray on the horizon and she was telling us, you know, don't, don't, don't see that smile for what it is. There's something behind it. And look at that again. Kylie Ray uh, taking control early on here against Tessa. Very, very impressive. Physically evenly matched. Age-wise very evenly matched. Kylie is going to have to be super aggressive and she's going to have to have eyes in the back of her head, so to speak, because there's no doubt that Tessa Blanchard will take a shortcut if she sees an opportunity to take one. I don't blame her. That's, that's her style. That's her MO. I mean, she's uh, related, you know, uh, uh, Tully Blanchard, her dad, four horsemen, you know, obviously dirty players in that game there. And Tessa here just wrangling. Wrangling Kylie Ray to the mat like a cowboy and a steer. Look at that. She's got a. That's not a chin lock. That's more of a choke. It is. The, yeah. re the referee's allowing it. I'm surprised the referee wasn't putting his fingers in there. But again, this is the main event here tonight. I think the referee is going to be a little bit more loose to make sure that this match. Let him play. Yeah, is is what it is. These fans can see something special here tonight to close out what has been an amazing night of action here at Warrior Wrestling. Tessa uh, bailing out. I don't know. Look like. Kylie tried to throw a knee. I don't know if she caught Tessa in the mouth or not. I'm telling the referee that she, yeah, the, look, she grabbed look, her hair. Absolutely. I, I, I didn't see it, did you? And look, again, like this referee needs to be paying better attention. I'm with Tessa here. I can't get over the Kylie Ray thief, criminal, tried to steal the belt. What else is she going to try to steal here tonight? You're calling her a thief, and she's hold, she was holding the ropes open for Tessa. Oh, okay. That's cool. Okay, so criminals can't do uh, nice things? Come on. Al Capone was almost mayor of Chicago right here. No. He did horrible things. Did he? Yeah, he's a mobster. No. Yes. Go to the Green Mill. Ask him to show you the secret okay. passageway. Okay, well, some people would consider him more of a Robin Hood. <laughs> okay, sure. Yeah, all right. And uh, we see Tessa Blanchard here, a little <laughs> jaw jack. She has an attitude, huh? Yeah, and it is. And it's like mind games she's trying to play here with Kylie. Is it mind games or is it just her personality? I think it's I think it's intentional here. I don't think that Tessa Blanchard does anything that's not intentional. You know, we've watched all these matches here tonight pick up and get going in a hurry. And I think Tessa Blanchard wants to slow this down. She wants to show Kylie that she's going to do this thing at her speed. And oh. just like that, she got caught in that moment where I think, again, trying to slow it down. 
I missed where her steps were. Flying head scissors sends Tessa into the corner and Kylie Ray, the challenger. Here she comes, running uppercut. Wow, look at that little back elbow there throwing Tessa down onto the mat. Heads up for Kylie. Uh, luckily, she was able to put on the brakes as yeah. Tessa dodges out of the way and grabs hold of the legs. Look out here, Kylie Ray's in trouble. Tessa Blanchard, the look of, oh, oh the, look wow. of Mal, the look of malice on Tessa's face. Oh, My is... God, we were thinking she was gonna come one way with the legs, All instead right. she just whipped her the opposite, and now into the cover to put it away and kick out of two. I have never seen anything like that, Rich. I thought the same thing. I thought she was gonna wing, uh, throw those legs right into that, uh, that uh, ring post there, but instead to go the other direction, I mean, just vicious, malicious, dangerous harmful, hurtful, the thing that Tessa Blanchard just did there to Kylie Ray, and, and look at the fish hooking the, oh man, you can't even do that in the UFC, you get disqualified, you get a five second count here, and again, like that big smile of Kylie, that's the, that's the million dollars, that's the look, you know, trying to, wow, yeah, no kidding, and Kylie here, she definitely looks distraught, oh my, look at that, and just a heinous toss there by Tessa right into the oh, row. Wow. Notice how she took herself off center uh -huh. about two to three feet before so that she could drop that uh, that knee right in the center of she, the back. She slid a little bit too. I don't know if the, the I don't know if the canvas is still a little slippery or not. Well I worry about that electrical cable out there. Yeah. You know, you could you could take that, wrap it around somebody's neck, get real vicious with it. I don't know if the referee considers that a part of the ring since it's part of the production. I would disagree it's part of the ring, but that's me. Well, it's underneath it, leading out. And Tessa here dragging Kylie Ray all over the stadium. Now, they only have 10 oh, seconds no. out Hold there. On. Oh, I thought they were going, I thought Tessa was going for the trash can. Uh, the re I doubt the referee is going to count them out in a title match. I think that the fans here would riot. Well, I did. I do think that I saw the referee attempting to a 10 count. Now, I don't know who this fan is on the outside who's giggling, but they better watch out or else they might get thrown a punch yeah, their own. You giggle like that, Tessa Blanchard might, uh, she may haul off and whack you. That's offensive there, and Tessa Blanchard rearing back and just laying it in. I'm going to tell you what, you can say whatever you want about Tessa Blanchard, but oh, look at this. There is nobody who takes this profession, this sport as serious as Tessa Blanchard. No, not at all. I mean, she, this is she her does, life. She does not screw around. She does not play. She is not here for fun. She's not here to make friends. This is serious business as it should be. Well, she grew up in this business. This is her whole life. This is not a joke to Tessa Blanchard. She has not just the title, not just the purse, but the, the respect of her father, the respect that she has for herself in this business. Her dad, her stepdad. You can't, yeah, you yeah, can't exactly. not forget Magnum T.A. Yeah, excellent. yeah, absolutely, of course. She grew up with Magnum T.A. Right, absolutely. And now in a figure four on the outside, and the ref are is not it, a figure four, is no. It, is Tessa simply trying to get herself disqualified or counted? I think she is. Is this how she plans on retaining the yeah. title here tonight? Why not? It, I'm going to tell you what. Oh, look at this. And look at that. Now, see, now she's going to get in the face of the official. I'm going to tell you what, Nick. If you haven't competed in six months, what would your MO be in your return matchup? Wouldn't you find any loophole you could to retain your title? Well, I mean, I would want to hope and think that I would believe in myself and think I could pull this thing off on my own, but I guess Tessa Blanchard feeling she's going to have to cut a few corners here to get what she wants. And you see her just rolling Kylie Ray down the field like a fumbled football. And she is fumbling around for sure. Oh, back over. Oh, what is this here? Tessa taking that Kylie, Kylie Ray sign. She enjoys this stuff too, huh? And the crowd is rejecting her. Oh, Kylie signed that poster. Oh, she did sign it. Kylie Ray signed that poster. Come on, Kylie. Oh, come on now. That was a that was a collectible signed oh, item. Oh, look, he turned his hat around. Yeah, okay. He's upset. Yeah. Okay, big guy. Yeah, you're gonna sit down. Yeah. Tessa would mop the floor with you. Yeah, no kidding. All right. Yeah, no kidding. All right, and. Tessa now 
gets Kylie in the ring, finally. I'm gonna tell you what, there's some people who look at Tessa Blanchard and say, well, it's distasteful. She's, oh, look at the, the, the arrogance and the attitude. And there are other people that say, you know what, good. This is what wrestling should be. It is about winning titles, it is about beating your opponent and embarrassing your opponent as well. Yeah, 100%, she is doing just that right now. Kylie Ray looking in a bad way at the moment. So many of these young wrestlers, honestly, it seems they all wanna be friends. They wanna be liked by people. Do you think Tessa Blanchard gives a damn whether or not anybody in this football field likes her? Well, that's she why doesn't I, care. That's why I say, Rich, Tessa is an alpha. She is the leader of the pack. She sets the speed and everyone else follows. And right now, Kylie Ray is not keeping up with this alpha she's dealing with in the ring. Look at this, just smacking her around. How much can you push Kylie Ray, though? I think we may find out in a second. You've seen her much more than I have. At, I'm point, at what point can you just push and shove and poke at somebody before they explode? What is Kylie's breaking point? That's a great question, Rich. And you know, I've seen Kylie get pushed to the, the brink several times in her young career here. And it takes a lot. But once that, once that light bulb goes off, once the click is clunk, Kylie Ray, she locks in and she is something else, man. She is a, a woman possessed. And if I'm Tessa Blanchard here, I want to get aggressive, hit a big move. Do something to put her down because look at that. Tessa, uh, Kylie Ray there firing back and she is pissed. And Forearm smashes right into the jaw. And Kylie Ray. And Kylie's a little wobbly. Oh, she went mouth, mouth first, first into, the, into the steel cable. Yeah, oh, that is brutal. That's, I think, how Joey Janela, that's why I think he had so many teeth messed up for all them root canals. Oh, look out. Tessa Blanchard. Up and over, a kick right to the jaw. It made me uncomfortable to see how Kylie's head snapped around yeah, there. It really did. Yeah, that was an unusual movement there from her head. Tess is just biding her time. Oh, yeah. Oh, come, oh yeah. Very cool spit. Gross. Disgusting. And Kylie Ray here. Kylie Ray with an opportunity to capture the Warrior Wrestling Women's Championship here tonight, but Tessa Blanchard has given her everything that she can handle, and it has been all Tessa so far in there. Yeah, it really has. I'm waiting for Kylie to... Oh, there it is. Maybe you, you, you take an inch. Maybe you can take a mile here, Kylie. Let's see what you got. Boot to the face. Awesome. Great. I don't think she got all of that, but good enough. Enough, exactly. But that's the thing. Is she's got to start stringing some moves together here. She's got to get some offense going. Oh, it's a clothesline by Kylie. And it looked like she was checking her knee there. Oh, she is. Yeah, she's she's def definitely checking that knee. She tweaked her knee at some point here. Reversal on the Irish whip. Kylie Ray rolling through. Yeah, that right leg's bothering Kylie. And I don't even know Super where that happened. Down under the cover. And a two count. Blanchard out at two. The fact I don't even know where that, that tweak happened in the knee scares me. Yeah. Because a lot of times when you see these injuries, it's like you see a moment where you're like, something didn't go well there. The fact that we don't know what it was that messed up her knee, this thing could be a lot more serious because she's been, you know, she's been pushing through it, whatever it is right now. And usually it is something that you see and it just, uh, it, you know, it really stands out to you. Exactly. And that's uh, the thing is when I don't know, when I don't notice what it was and I see somebody limping around like that, really starts to get the gears ticking there and turning. But uh, what's going on here? And Kylie Ray, she's trying to give it her all right now. You well, know, she, she, I, let's be honest here. She has taken a hell of a beating. It has been probably 90% Tessa Blanchard. Kylie is just... Trying to battle back into this matchup, death by a thousand cuts, right? Yeah, no it's, it's just been, you know, a couple of nicks here, a couple of nicks there. And Kylie Ray taken back down to the mat by Tessa Blanchard. Well, that stunned the champion. Another hard right forearm in Tessa. And yeah, her jaw, she's trying to make sure all the teeth are in place. Kylie lining her up. But it is Blanchard who connects with the shot, but now Kylie Ray fighting back. Godzilla Mothra right here in the middle of the ring. Tight along the line in our main event tonight in Chicago. And Kylie Ray lighting up a mega evolution from Kylie Ray Missed here. The clothesline. Oh, and a short arm clothesline by Blanchard. Blanchard again. Same to suplex. And she's taking this thing away right now. She's Cover running with to it. Put it away. Blanchard for the window! What an impressive kick out there by Kylie Ray. I for sure thought that Tessa Blanchard had it in that moment. And Tessa here, you know, of course, she just gave a, a lot. She pulled out a lot of 
Big moves from her arsenal there. Does she go back? Does she double back? Does she use some of what she's had? Does she think of something new? I mean, again, maybe Tessa Blanchard went away, trained stronger, learned some more, and, and, and it's going to be even more devastating. Yeah, we, we don't know. I mean, you assume six months off. Who knows, right? Could be who doing knows, anything. Who knows what your ring conditioning is like, but uh, Blanchard showing no signs of, oh, hold on here. Tessa trying to put it away. Roll back the other way. Kylie gets a two count. Blanchard nails Kylie. A diamond cutter to put it away. Kylie says no. And a huge, a huge relief. A, a cheer came from the crowd there as Kylie was able to kick out. And as, as, as the temperature drops, the action in the ring is heating up here tonight. Giving these Warrior Wrestling fans something to really sink their teeth into as we are in the main event right now of this big, big show. Now let's grab the bowl out of Kylie's here. Have you noticed that Tessa has been adjusting her left boot? I don't know if there's something going on with her leg, too. I do. I wonder if it's new gear, right? Is she just trying to break this stuff in? Is she, is she a little uncomfortable in it? And wait, she's got the backpack now. We're going to find out what's in Kylie's backpack. I bet it's something criminal. Well, come on. Something criminal. I think that there's... The, the Panama Papers could be in there. I don't know. Get out of here. Oh, Kylie's so happy to have her backpack back. Oh, come on now. Come on! Tessa Blanchard! That's it. I mean, good job, Kylie. Way to show up here tonight. Whoa, wait. Not enough to pull Whoa, away, wait. Tessa! Tessa distracted the official, the forearm to the back of the head, and then the hammerlock DDT. Look at Tessa laughing. She's going to be kidding me. You kicked out of that? No. And she seems motivated by this, oh, Rich. Yeah, the look on her face. Okay, you want to do something like that? You want to kick out? Well, let me show you what else I got in store for you. Yeah, look at smug arrogance on her face. That, that confidence in, hold on now. Tessa could be setting up for the Magnum. And she is walking ever so slowly, carefully to that top row. Oh, Kylie might have saved herself right there. And uh, what is that hanging for? Is that her, I think that's her necklace that broke. Oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. And it fell off of her. I was gonna say that could get in the way. But uh, Kylie meeting Tessa on the top turnbuckle knew that the Magnum might be on the way and hold on for Kylie. And Kylie here setting up for the suplex. Like two pirates battling on the plank. One man will be thrown, one woman will be thrown to the Sharks. The Warrior Wrestling Women's Championship hangs in the balance as Blanchard purchases herself on the top turnbuckle. Here comes Blanchard. Kylie dodged out of the way. Blanchard again now. Oh, and wait, Kylie rolls her off. Is that enough? Did she get it? Yes! It? She got her! She got her! What? She got her! what? Kylie Ray's the new Warrior Wrestling Women's Champion! Wow, the smile cut the diamond! That is it for Warrior Wrestling's Greatest Matches. We will be back next episode to count down the top three.